Let's say you have a variable in PHP on the server and you need to use its value in JavaScript in the browser. How do you get the value of this variable from PHP to JavaScript? First, let's look at exactly what the problem is. Here we have a PHP script on a web server. When the browser requests this script, the PHP code runs on the server. This generates output that is sent to the client. This is typically HTML, which can contain JavaScript. Once this output leaves the server, PHP has finished with it. At this point, the PHP code has finished executing and can no longer make any changes to the output. Once the output is delivered to the client, any JavaScript in that HTML can execute. So if we want to access the value of a variable that's on the server, we have two choices. One is to include this data in the HTML generated by the original request, and the other is to send another request from the client after the original request has completed. Let's look at some examples of how this would work. Here we have a simple PHP script. At the top, we have some PHP where we're creating a variable called name. After this PHP, we have some basic HTML, a header, a body with a heading, and an empty script tag for some JavaScript. In here, we want to use the value of the name variable from the PHP. The simplest way to do this is to write out the value of the PHP variable directly inside the JavaScript. So let's declare a JavaScript variable called name and note that this isn't the same variable that we have in PHP, it just has the same name. The value of this will be a string and inside these quotes we'll use the PHP short echo tags to echo out the value of the name variable from PHP. Then let's show an alert containing a message that includes this value. Let's open the script in a browser, and there we have the alert box containing the message. If we view the source, we can see the value of the variable in PHP has been written to the value of the variable in JavaScript. This is the simplest way to get a value in PHP into JavaScript. It's easy to do, but it does tightly couple the PHP code to the JavaScript. This makes it difficult to separate them. For example, if you wanted the JavaScript in a separate JavaScript-only file, this wouldn't work. Plus, we have to be careful when printing out data like this to make sure that it's escaped properly. For example, in the PHP code, let's add a surname to this name value that contains a single quote. In the browser, if we refresh the page, we get an error, an unexpected identifier. This is because we're using single quotes to enclose the string, and the string itself contains a single quote. A simple way to fix this would be to use double quotes to enclose the string in the JavaScript instead, And now in the browser, the error has gone and it works. What if though, in the PHP, this string contains a double quote as well? Let's add some, escaping them with backslashes as we're enclosing this string in PHP with double quotes. Back in the browser, we get the unexpected identifier error again, because the string contains a double quote. The reason I did this was to show that it's tricky to make sure values are escaped properly when printing out the value of a variable like this. To fix it, we could manually escape quote characters in this string before we print it out, but there's a simpler way. 
we can use the JSON encode function in PHP to encode the variable into JSON. The advantage of using this is that in addition to simple strings, we could write out more complex values like arrays. So when we print this value out, let's call JSON encode on it. And as this will add quotes where necessary, we can remove the quotes around the value. Now in the browser, the error is gone and the value containing both types of quote is shown. If we view the source, we can see the string is enclosed in double quotes and the double quotes inside the string have been escaped. This is an easy and safe way to get a PHP value into JavaScript. Although, as I said earlier, having the PHP mixed with the JavaScript like this tightly couples them together and makes them difficult to separate. Let's look at an alternative way of doing it that doesn't do this. Instead of printing out this value inside the script tag, let's put it in the HTML instead, inside the DOM. Let's start by putting this value in a hidden field. For the value of the hidden field, we're not printing this out into JavaScript, so we don't need to use the JSON encode function. Instead, as we're printing this out into HTML, we use the HTML special chars function. This will convert values like double quotes into the appropriate HTML entity. Then in the JavaScript, we can get the value of this hidden field from the DOM. In the browser, this still works as before. If we view the source, there's the hidden field, and we can see the double quotes in the value from the PHP have been converted into HTML entities. This has decoupled the PHP and the JavaScript, so now you could put this JavaScript in a separate file if you wanted to. However, we have added a meaningless element to the HTML, and if we wanted something more complex than a string in here, we'd have to make sure this was still valid HTML. One alternative to a hidden field is to use a meta element in the head section of the HTML. So let's move this line to the head section. Change it to a meta tag. Remove the type attribute add a name attribute and change the value attribute to content. In the JavaScript, now we can get the value of the content attribute of this meta element instead. In the browser, this still works as before, and in the HTML, there's the meta element. Another alternative is to use a data attribute. Meta elements are for data about the whole document, whereas data attributes are used to associate some data with a particular element. So instead of this meta element, let's add a data attribute to the h1 tag, with the same value. In the JavaScript, let's get this value instead. And in the browser, this still works as before, 
and there's the data attribute in the HTML. All these techniques, a hidden field, meta tags and data attributes avoid mixing PHP with JavaScript, but we are still embedding values directly into the DOM. If you want to avoid this, there is another way to do it. We can pass the value in a cookie. This has the advantage of keeping it to the same request. So in the PHP, after we create the variable, let's set a cookie called name with the value of the variable. When we call the setCookie function, we must ensure that the HTTP only flag is set to false, otherwise we won't be able to read the value of the cookie from JavaScript. False is the default, so we don't need to specify this argument for this example. In the JavaScript, we can read the value of the cookie that was set from the PHP. I'll use a regular expression to get the value of the name cookie from the document.cookie property. In the browser, we see the message, but its value is unexpected. If we look at the browser storage, there's the cookie with the same value. The set cookie function in PHP URL encodes the value of the cookie. So to display it properly, we need to use the decode URI component function in the JavaScript to decode it. Now in the browser, we see the message properly. Using a cookie is another way to send data from PHP to JavaScript, and this way doesn't mix PHP into the HTML or JavaScript at all so they can be kept totally separate if that's what you need. Cookies can only contain small amounts of data though, so this isn't suitable for large amounts of data. However, this does keep it all within one request. All the techniques we've looked at so far send the data in the same request. This is fine if it's a simple page and is the fastest way to do it. An alternative is to request the data using an AJAX request. Doing it this way keeps the data totally separate, but it is a bit more complex and does potentially take longer from the user's point of view. Let's look at how this would work. First, let's create a new script called data.php. This is going to return the data from PHP. Then in the main script, let's remove this PHP code from the top and paste it in the new script. We don't need the closing PHP tag as this file just contains PHP. Instead of setting a cookie, we'll encode the value as JSON print it out and also add the JSON content type header. Back in the other script, we'll use the fetch API to request this which will return the data. For the purposes of this demo, we'll keep it simple and just pass the JSON response
which will just contain a string with the name, then with that we'll show the alert message. In the browser, we see the message and the AJAX request to the other script and the JSON value that's returned. The main advantage of this is that we keep the data we want from PHP and the JavaScript totally separate, which means it's easier to maintain and will scale better. In addition, we can also pass complex data and large amounts of data if we need to. As for disadvantages, it wasn't obvious from this simple example, but this is making an additional HTTP request, so it will take slightly longer. So if you need the value of a PHP variable in JavaScript, you have several choices. Echo the value out directly into the JavaScript or DOM, use a cookie, or an AJAX request. Which method you choose depends on how much data there is and how complex your page is. For simple scripts, I would embed the value directly into the DOM. But for more complex web applications, I would use an AJAX request. All the code shown in this video is linked to in the description. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.